Hello, dear friends. We are now, I believe, live. And this is our first video for the new channel. And we will see what is going on here, if it works or if it doesn't work. So here is Parsha's Nikates. And Parsha's Nikates is powerful in many, many ways. As we know, our conversation is with Joseph. Joseph is in Egypt. He's in prison. He helped two guys get out of, well, get out of prison, one to live and one to die. He interpreted their dreams and that brings us to a very, very interesting conversation because we all dream whether or not we remember our dreams or we don't remember our dreams is a conversation which we will go into. But before I do that, I want to to tell you exactly what we're doing here. Before I was taking the Parsha and basically discussing the interpretation of the Parsha in the Hasidic way, in a more open conversation, now I'm bringing in the Zohar directly. I will read you Things directly from the Zohar. I'm using the Soncino Zohar translation into English. For the Italian, I'm using the Soncino and I'm doing the, uh, the translation myself, but we have the exact translation of the Soncino Zohar. So we're in Parsha's Nikates and we're talking about dreams. So here is what the Zohar says. We've learned that when a man has a dream, he should unburden himself of it before men who are his friends so that they should express to him their good wishes and give utterance to words of good omen. Desire, which is Thought is the beginning of all things, and utterance is the completion. And so a deep symbolism will in this way be affected, and all will have been made good. Thus a man's friends should affirm the good interpretation, and so all will be well. We see that God communicates to each man by means of dreams, of the degree and the shade of color, comfortable to the degree and shade of color of the man himself. The Judean remarked, Assuredly, it is only the good man that is made to see true dreams. When a man is in bed asleep, his soul leaves him and roams to and fro towards the upper worlds and enters as far as she can go. And numerous bands of pure spirits who are traversing the world meet her. If she be worthy, she ascends on high 
and sees notable things, but if not, she falls into the hands of the other side who communicate to her lying things or things that are about to happen shortly. And when the man awakens, the soul communicates to him what she saw. The unjust man is thus shown a happy dream, but an untruthful one, so as to make him go further astray from the path of truth. For since he turned aside from the path, they defile him the more, as whoever sets out to purify himself is purified from above, and whoever sets out to defile himself is similarly defiled from above. This is what the Zohar says in Parshas Miketz about a dream. Some very important conversation here because extremely important to know that you do not discuss your dreams with anyone who is not a good friend of yours and who will give utterance to the words of good omen. Very, very, very serious because discussing a dream with someone who will not give you a good interpretation or who is not your friend or has not your best interest at heart is going to be bad for you. Zora goes on to say, desire which is thought. Desire which is thought is the beginning of all things and utterances are the completion. So if a person desires to give good interpretation, which means if his thought is good, then the words that he will utter as completion will be good. So the Soar says, and so a deep symbolism will in this way affirm the good interpretation, and so all will be well. Which brings us to the Hasidic expression, Tracht gut wird sein gut, if you think well, so it will be well. Thus, a man's friend should affirm the good interpretation, and so all will be well. Very simple to understand in our truths that we hold and, obviously, Zohar goes on to say that God communicates to each man by means of dreams of the degree and the shade of color comfortable to the degree and shade of the man himself. Meaning, that if your color is dark and your thinking is dark, you won't be comfortable with the degree of shade of light. But if the color of you is light and the degree of your color as the man yourself as the woman yourself is light 
so will be exactly what Hashem will give you. And since dreams are a 60th of death, when your soul leaves you and roams to and fro in the upper worlds and enters where she can, and numerous bands of pure spirit who are traversing the world will meet her. If she is worthy, she will ascend on high and see notable things, but if not, she falls into the hands of the other side who communicate to her lying things or things which are about to happen shortly. Now this is a very, very big thought here because if the person is of dark color themselves, they will receive dark spirits who will communicate lying things or things that are about to happen shortly. And that may not be too pleasant. And when the man awakes, the Zohar says, the soul communicates to him what she saw. An unjust man is shown a happy dream but an untruthful one. The other side of it is a just man may be shown a not-so-happy dream, but a truthful one. And a non-happy dream may be more good than bad, whereas a happy dream may be not so good and lead him further astray, as the Zohar says, from the path of truth. For since he turned aside from the right path, they'll defile him even more. But whoever sets to purify himself is purified from above. And whoever sets to defile himself is similarly defiled from above. Which means if you go to sleep at night and you allow yourself to hold on to the trunk of the tree of life instead of the branches and instead of the leaves and instead of the, the stalk then you will have the power of goodness. The prayer to Hashem before you go to sleep. The holding on to the trunk of the tree of life will protect you from defiling yourself either at night or during the day. And your soul will be shown path of truth instead of path which leads you further astray. The tree of life, as the so Zohar says, also in Parsha's Mikhe. All the faithful ones of Israel lay hold onto the tree of life, some grasping the stalk, some the branches and some the leaves, and others again the roots. But those who exert themselves in the study of Torah grasp the very trunk of the tree 
and so lay hold upon all. And so we affirm. Whoever labors in Torah and cleaves unto her is privileged to hold on to the tree of life as it is written. She is a tree of life to them that hold to her. And those who take hold upon the tree of life in this world will also keep hold of it in the world to come since the grades assigned to the souls in the next world correspond to their state of departing from this world. Simple to understand, isn't it? So basically, when you labor in Torah, and when you are attached to Torah, which is the tree of life, your dreams will be of good omen. Your friends will interpret them and give utterance a wonderful completion. Your soul will not defile itself not by day and not by night and all will be well with you. And this is why Yaisen, when he interpreted Pharaoh's dream was accepted because he took the good, and he made the dream good. And he said, there is good in this dream, and if you prepare yourself, the outcome of this dream will be goodness for the Pharaoh and for Egypt and then for the world. And Pharaoh accepted this because he wanted to hear and he wanted to believe the goodness. And when he interpreted the dream for good for one and for bad for the other, that is exactly what happened. And his own dream took 22 years to manifest themselves. But the Zohar here does not talk about that it will happen immediately unless it's not so great and it's short term. But the real message that the Zohar brings to this conversation is Hold on to the tree of life and you will have what you need. There is another very, very important conversation that I do want to bring up. I didn't for the Italian, but I am going to do it for the English because I just didn't know if the Italian was going to come out or not. But now that I know... How to work this. I'm going to do this. There's a great, great, great conversation about Yosef having two sons before the year of famine. And the Zohar speaks of the days before the days of famine which are the days of plenty and the years of plenty. And Zohar writes, The lesson to be derived from this is that the spring of the Holy Covenant should not be allowed to 
flow during the days of famine and the years of famine. Hence, Joseph, the exemplar of sacredness of the covenant, checked his fountainhead in the years of famine and did not allow it to bring offspring into the world. It is incumbent upon every man during the years of famine. Rabbi Shimon said, there is a sway and there is a deep idea contained here, namely that if a man does not close his fountain, when the year of famine has sway, then he causes a spirit from the other side to enter the child then born and so enables the side of impurity to increase at the expense of the side of holiness. Hence, of those who do not observe such abstinence at such a time it is written. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children, etc. For insomuch as such children are called strange children, assuredly the parents have dealt treacherously against the Lord. Thus happy is the portion of holy Israel who do not allow impurity to take the place of sacredness. And scripture just tells us, unto Joseph were born two sons before the year of famine came in as much as from the time the famine overspread the land, he closed his sores so as not to give children to the unclean spirit and not to put impurity in the place of holiness. It behooves a man to wait for the master of holiness to come and establish his sway. And I will wait for the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Happy are those righteous that know the ways of the Holy One, blessed be he, and keep the precepts of the Torah and follow them, for the way of the Lord are right, and the just do walk in them, but transgressors do stumble therein. Also, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. My friends, this is very, very powerful conversation. Very, very clear. Page 203b, section 1, Sonchino Soar, is what I just brought to you. And here is the question that comes to mind. What? Today are the years of famine. Today where we have everything. Today where there is plenty of everything. What is the year? What are the years of famine? And when should the fountainhead be closed, and when should strange children not be brought into the world? 
And that is the conversation between each and every one of us. And Hashem. From this passage, I have learned why I brought strange children into the world and why I lost one child and for all intents and purpose have lost also the second. Because during my years of famine that I did not spiritually observe and did not know that it was not the time to bring children. And certainly my husband didn't know anything. But only today do I understand why. And I also understand that Hashem's ways are above and beyond any desire of ours. Be well, my friends. Take to heart the Torah. Amen. Amen.